Yeah, hi everyone and welcome to my latest video. This one's just a short guide on fitting the basics of surface mount devices. So basically I'm going to be going through 1206s, Captain resistors, sort of 805 size, 603 right down to the 0402s. I'm then going to be say fitting an SO8IC, got a voltage regulator, I've got a SOC23 there and a couple of LEDs below it. And I'm going to finish the video with this 100 pin quad flat pack which uh, yeah I'll show that right at the end in sort of quite fine detail so yeah what you need really a couple of fine pairs of tweezers um, I, I used two different types of solder through it different sizes I'll mention them and uh, yeah I'll show everything step by step so it should be pretty clear so what I'll do I'll get straight on fitting the 0805s and uh, hopefully you'll sort of learn something from it and uh, yeah hopefully you enjoy right, so it I'll come to the sort of fitting the first components uh, for the video well, all I'm going to do on this, I'm just going to fit an 0805 um, resistors and capacitors to these two positions. So you've got C50 and R82. This is the way I like to do it. I know some people basically they like to put a blob on one end and then sort of uh, attach the components to that blob and then redo the other end. This is why I like to do it. So literally, I put a little bit of flux on the pads. So you can't really do this without the flux. And I'll drop the components into position. So you've got your capacitor and your resistor. And then what I like to do, I literally like to just tack one end on. Because I think this way you get a sort of better feel for how much solder you need. So you're looking for a sort of a, a joint that's sort of curved from the top to bottom like a ski slope. Yeah, so literally I tack them into position. So they're nice and central to the pads. And all I do then, I go to the other end and just solder that properly. So you're looking for a nice curved joint top to bottom. Same with this one. And then I can go to the first end and revisit that and do it sort of properly, same as the other end. So that's what you're looking for, a nice sort of curved joint. I'll quickly clean these up so you can sort of see, uh, see how they are. But yeah, if you can get these joints sort of nice and uh, sort of uniform and sort of nice amount of solder, this will enable you to do the harder components in the future. So what I've got there, I've got sort of a nice sort of curved joint going down, same there. So you've got four nice joints, nice and central components. Like I say, if you can get these joints not bulbous, they really help you when you sort of get to the smaller 0402s and your fine pitch ICs. So what I do, I, as always, I'll put photos of these up at the end. But what I do now, I'll move on to, to other components for the video and uh, be able to go from there. Right, so now we move on to some uh, SOT23 diodes. Basically, I'm going to fit a Z4 and a Z5 in position there. This is literally done the same way as I've done the resistors um, beforehand and the capacitor. All I do, a little bit of flux again. So it's pretty vital the flux. And all I do, lift the component into position. Again, I don't sort of blob one pad like say some other people do, but this is just the way I like to do it. So I'll get a little bit on my iron, and I normally tack the bottom sort of right hand corner of these ones. Just put a tiny amount on there, just to hold it into position. Same with that one. So I've got a nice amount on the corners, and all I do then, just get a fresh bit of flux just to sort of bathe it all when you're sort of doing it properly. And then I can go to the other end first. I normally just do this one first. And what you're looking for, you don't want too much on these. You just want you can even see the outline of the leg, and that's fine. So if you can get these nice, that will really help you in the future on, on the fine pitch stuff like I said earlier. I'm using lead-free solder, that's why the joints are a little bit sort of duller than normal. Yeah, if they're really, really shiny joints, it tends to be where people are using leaded solder. So what I do, just give them a quick clean, and you'll sort of see the amount I've got on there. But yeah, like I say, if you can get all these sort of nice and uh, sort of uniform, not too much solder, it will really help you in the future. So as you see, I've got a nice amount, sort of four pads at the front, that's back two of the same. And that that's basically how I fit my SOT23s. So what I'll do now, I'll move on to some other components and uh, I'll show you how I do them. Right, so I'm quickly going to show you how I do my sort of LED diodes. So basically, same again, put a little bit of flux on the pads. And I'll just lift over the components. As you can see, there's a silk screen dot to this end of the diode. Now normally that denotes the cathode, which is on this particular component is the green band. Because I've look, sort of looked at the data sheet. But um, yeah, some designers have sort of decided to make that the anode, so it's well worth getting a sort of data sheet up to make sure you're fitting it the right way around. And it, I do these exactly the same 
as I do my 0805 resistors and caps as sort of earlier in the video so I just put a little bit of just tin them both ends slightly to tack it on just don't need a lot really on there what we do then so we'll visit the other end and do that properly similar amount to earlier so you're looking for that nice sort of curved joint so you don't want too much on these and same that end you've just got to watch the potted body on the top for these particular components so I'll give that a quick clean and what I tend to do after I tend to light them up just to sort of make sure I've got the right polarity so as always I'll clean these up and sort of put photos up at the end just get a little bit of flux off so what I do now just light these up just to prove I've got them around the right way so as you can see that matches the dot and that one as well so they're around the right way so what I do now move on to something else Right, we come on now to an SO8IC, so I'm going to basically fit U3. Now I've changed the camera angle for this, so you're going to get a really clear view of the joints at the front. So basically what I'm going to do, as always, a little bit of flux on all eight pads. So I've made the camera angle a little bit different, so you'll get a, a real clear view of the, the front four pins. So what I do, all I do here, same again, I do literally tack any sort of two pads on one on each side I'll do one there and one there so check your polarity make sure that's that's correct because uh, you wouldn't believe how many times I've seen people even myself have done that so now just go around the, uh, the front four you're not looking for too much you just want it to run along the joint and around the back of the, the hill so there's a little bit coming out the back same there So you don't want too much on them, you just want a bit a nice fillet, sort of a little bit of sloping at the front and so it runs along around the back. So yeah, literally I've got a nice sort of joint you can as you can see. I've got a nice little joint around the front, sort of down there, nice amount. You, you don't want too much. And I've got a similar around the back, which obviously I'll take photos after and uh, clean it up and so you'll see all them as well. So that's what you're looking for. You're not looking for loads of solder. Because when you get to the fine pitch stuff, this is just, you know this will really help you. So all I do, I'll give it a quick clean, and then uh, I'll put photos up at the end. But say that that completes the uh, SO8. So what I'll do, I'll move on to something else. Right. So following on from the SO8 IC that I did, which was rather a large component, I'm now going right the other way down to the 402 size resistor. So again, all I do, add me flux over all the pads. Then what I do, basically tack that into position with the tiny amount. So these are really small, so hopefully they're staying to focus so you can sort of gauge what I'm doing. So literally put a tiny amount on both. Just getting really central. So these are generally the smallest resistors you'll probably have to deal with. We do do 201 sizes, but they're... Yeah, they're basically not use that too much. So uh, this is the most common small size. So what I do then, go to the other end, and as with all my two-sided components, just add a tiny amount to the other end. That's all you need. I'll show you these photos after, so you'll get a clear idea of what these finish up like. So it might be quite hard from the camera angle. So please bear with me. So that's all you need. I've got a tiny amount there. I'll give them a quick clean up, so hopefully you'll see where sort of better idea of what they look like let's give them a quick clean so yeah almost sort of sort of double sided resistors caps sort of uh, any sort of tents always do me two sided two ended components the same way just add a little bit to one tack do the other properly so as you can see i've got a nice curved joint sort of going top to bottom it's the same the other end like i said i'll put some photos up after so that's what you're looking for on the 0402s so what I do, I put a few photos up of the ones we've sort of shown so far, and then I put a few more videos up after them.
Right, we're going to start this second section of videos with a quite a large voltage regulator. Obviously, a lot larger than the you know, 402 before the uh, before the photos. So what I've done, if you get anything like this, you can see on this one here, this one's actually connected to, to the plane all around it, and that's going to make that difficult to solder. Because when I see people soldering these, they just get a, generally a bit run right up the end, but it don't really spread across the pad. So what I've done on this one, I've actually this isn't joined to the plane, but this is just if you're struggling this is what you want to do I've literally tinned this with sold already and wicked it all off so I've got it nice and flat and so when you solder the end it will sort of more easily spread under the body and join the pad underneath so that's that's a good tip basically if you're struggling to get the solder to go beyond sort of the end tin it first wick it off and obviously uh, it make it a lot easier so what I do now I put the component on and uh, I'll show you how I've soldered so it up. we come on to the first end of the, the regulator so what I do as always a little bit of flux so what i do i slide the component into position and then i sort of get these two generally soldered up the middle one on this component middle leg isn't actually used so you will find some of these do have the middle pin missing so what i can do hopefully it's stay in focus because uh, i've got to change my iron bit for this i've got rather a large one to help with a basically aid with the other end i do get that central and then solder these up properly uh, hopefully this, the focus is staying. You'll basically, hopefully you'll see the amount I've got on these. You just want it to run around the sides, around the hill. So you've got quite a nice amount sort of going up the sides, right round to the back of the hill. So that's basically the first end. So what I do now, just turn it round, and I can solder up the other end. As you can see, you don't get a lot of room on these components at the end. That's why if you pre-tin them, like I did a minute ago, it really aids you. So again, a little bit of flux. So when you get a ground plane on these components, you might need quite a large tip. So I've got actually got a large tip with a flat side on it. So what I can then do, just turn it around a little bit more. So stand on its side, and this when this takes, it'll go really nice. It just takes quite a little while to go. Right, I know, because it's already tinned, that's going to run really nicely underneath. Just literally, that's all I've got to do. As you can see, you've got a lovely joint right around the bottom. It's gone really well, right the way along. It's spread underneath because it was already tinned. So that's basically what you're looking for in your regulators. So yeah, if you're struggling, like I say, pre-tin it and uh, that really aid you. So what I do, I, now I'm just going to move on to a few components. That I've already put onto the board, but they're just more examples of double-ended components, just to see, uh, you know, what the joints look like. All right. So following on from the voltage regulator, all I've done here, I've literally already sort of soldered these on properly, just to show you sort of what the joint should look like. So yeah, these are basically 603 caps down there. So as always, like you can see, the curved joint going top to bottom. The same the other end. There you got a couple of sort of 805 resistors. Same again. There's a big cap, 1206 cap up there. There's a large tent up there. As you can see, all the joints are sort of generally the same sort of shape. Um, all I do, exactly the same. All my two two-ended components, I do all the same way as in previous videos, no matter what the size. So there, that's generally how I do them. So um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's a good method. And like I said, I don't pre-tin sort of or pre-blob the pads like some people do, but it's like everyone's got their own preference. But this is just the way I like it to... Uh, you know, to get a nice joint so yeah what i'll do now i'll move on from this i'll lastly i'll show you the uh, quad flat pack 100 pin and uh yeah after that i'll put a few photos up and uh hope you enjoy it right so this is where we finally come on to the last component i'm going to fit for these videos um this is a 100 pin qfn or quad flat pack so basically what I've, what you do first basically put it on your pads and line it all up i've already tacked a pin around the back side in this corner so what I do, I tack a pin on the on the other side, the opposite side, and then I show you how I fit sort of do the joints. So basically, all I do, run a bead of solder, sorry, read a bead of flux around that side. Just put a little bit on your iron. You just want to tack one corner on the opposite side to the one I just did a minute ago. So what I do, just tack any sort of pin on this one. So let's tack that into position. Then I can just literally run down the uh, the joints with my solder. I don't drag solder like some people, I do individual pins. So what I do, hopefully you can get a sort of picture of what I'm doing. It's quite hard for the camera angle. I can sort of just go along, 
nice and simple, just feeding a little bit in all the time, doing maybe one or two pins at a time, and that's that side, all soldered up. Got a nice little fillet on every joint, so it's running around the back, and that's as simple, you know, as, a, as it can be really. I don't like to drag solder because I'm always a bit worried about the pins. So what I do, I'll turn it around, I'll do a different camera angle for the second side, and uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully it go all right. Right, so coming to the second side, so what I've done, I've changed the camera angle, so hopefully you can get a sort of clear view of what I'm doing. So again, run a little bit of flux along the whole side, and all I do again, is literally get my iron, and do one pin at a time, in and out, in and out, in and out. So if you catch two pins at a time, not a problem. But I'm getting a nice little sort of bead of solder right around both sides of the joint down round to the back round to the heel and that's literally how I do sort of you know basically how I do the second side it's uh yeah it's a good option this I say I like to do the pins individually so you, you know if people like to drag solder that's good that's fine um but at the end of the day everyone sort of gets their preference this is just literally the way I like to do it right so it's now onto the third side so again just run a little bit of flux all down the side and then say so do the same as the first two sides do each pin individually. I've already tacked one the corner on this one. So that's all I do, go in and out, in and out, in and out. It's not a lot longer than drag soling, it's just, you know, I personally find it a little bit safer. So there you go, it's that simple. Right, so finally, we do the fourth side. So again, a little bit of flux. The flux is really important with soldering. You must, you know, must really use it. It just aids the soldering so much, so again, same again, in and out. It's just, you know, this is just a good safe method for, for everyone really. You get the odd little short, but you can easily remove it. So that's it, that's all four sides done. So what I'll do now, I'll clean it all up and uh, put some photos up. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed all them videos. And um, if you did, you know, please sort of like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Yeah, hi, so yeah, basically just wanted to record this little bit of extra video for this last IC placement I did. Um, yeah, right at the start of the video, I think I said it was called a QFN. It's actually a QFP ends like no leads, and this one's obviously got leads. So this is actually a QFP. So I just thought I'd sort of correct it, save everyone messaging in. There's just a couple of other little points I should have really said. Basically, if you can get yourself some 025 millimeter solder, that will really aid you when you're fitting these. Uh, it's available from a company I use called BLT Circuits. It's based in England. And also one other thing that is really helpful for this is sort of basically get yourself a small conical tip for your iron. And um, that's what I use. Basically you struggle with a big tip doing pin by pin. So that's basically another good tip. Just get a conical one and uh, yeah, you'll find it a lot easier. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the, the last video. And um, yeah, if you did, it'd be great if you could like and subscribe. And like I said earlier, I'll see you all again soon. Thanks a lot.